Hi, this is Sam Blau here at the Maryland Science Center. So we are getting ready to science back to school, and if you're going back to school, you got to do it in style. So we are getting ready to uh, batik some pencil cases. Batik is a really cool ancient decorative art that's used for uh, enhancing fabric. So used all across uh, Asia, even in Africa. And it's really neat because it's art, but it's also science. So to get started with this project, you're gonna need some ingredients. The first thing we need is our pencil cases. So we ordered some uh, canvas pencil cases. You wanna use a fabric that is a natural fiber, so nothing that's synthetic. You need something cotton, so it's going to uh, take up the dye. We have our fabric dyes here, and as you can see, they start out looking pretty dark, but once we uh, start painting it onto the fabric, it'll be a little bit lighter. So actually, you need to do a few layers if you really want it to end up looking darker again. Uh, we've got our clear school glue. It needs to be uh, washable school glue, so something that's going to wash out in the wash because that's an important part of our process. We've got our paint brushes, paper towels, water for cleaning our paintbrushes and of course we're going to be working on top of a tray because we are using fabric dye. We don't want to dye our wood here and I'm wearing a smock. I don't want to dye my uniform. So let's get started. Okay so the first step uh, to batiking is starting out with our school glue and our pencil case. Now this is going to be a multi-step process so definitely leave yourself uh, like a whole afternoon to do this because we're going to be adding our school glue to our pencil case. We're going to need to let it dry. So I'm going to add a design uh, to the pencil case. I'm going to freeform it. If you like a little bit more structure, you could certainly lightly with a uh, pencil uh, trace out a design and then trace the school glue on top of that. So I'm going for, let's say, uh, maybe like some dashes as part of my design here. And what we're doing is we are creating the design that's going to actually be our pattern on our pencil case. Our school glue, once it's dry, will help to resist the fabric to the dye. So when I start uh, dyeing my fabric, anything that's covered in school glue is not going to absorb it. So that's how batiking works, is making sure that part of the fabric doesn't absorb the dye. So now that I've got my design on here, I'm gonna to need to let it dry. And then if I want, I can flip it over and do another design on the other side. So that's why you gotta leave yourself some time. We're gonna add designs, let it dry, add more designs, let it dry. And once your pencil case is covered in all the design you need, and it's all dry, you move on to the next step. Okay, so my glue has dried on my pencil case, so I can tell that it's dry, it's not really tacky anymore, we're ready for the next step. So I grabbed a paper towel and I'm just going to get it folded up and I'm going to stick it in here because I don't want the back of my pencil case to be dyed the same color as the front. Now if you are one color person and you just want it all dyed the same color, then don't worry about this step, but if you want the back and the front to look a little bit different, you can put this uh, paper towel in here or you could get a piece of cardboard and use that as a barrier. That way the dye doesn't seep through. Okay, so I've got my different colors here and I'm going to use my small brush and get really technical. So start off with my pink and start brushing it on. You also have the option of just uh, pouring this dye into a larger container and dyeing it all the same color if you'd like. Now here's where the cool science and art comes in. This is where my glue was. And like I said, that glue is resisting the dye because the glue is a polymer, so it's got these really nice uh, cross-linking chains and when it's dry, those are nice and tight and they're not going to allow anything to sink through. So we've got our science going on and we're getting the design, so we've got our art piece as well. So I'm just going to keep painting, maybe I'll choose another color, and get as artistic and fancy as I like until I'm happy with it. I'm going to let it dry. And then the next thing I'm going to need to do is once this is all dry, painted how I like dried, I'm going to actually do a cycle in the washing machine to get all of that glue 
off. We don't want the glue to stay there. It was just there to do the resistance part for us because it's washable school glue. It'll wash out just one cycle on the wash, dry it, and we'll be able to see our finished result. Okay, so we're all finished. We let the dye dry onto the fabric. It sank in, coated all the fibers. I washed it. The glue washed off. And you can see, as I said, uh, the, the dye has lightened a little bit because just like when you dye your hair, not all of it's going to stay in the fiber. Some of it washes out. And I didn't do the back because I wanted to see what would happen. So as some of the dye does wash out, if you leave part of it blank, it's gonna pick up a little bit of color, but looks kind of nice. So just to see what would happen, I tried a couple different uh, styles. So I did one with swirls on one side and I used the sponge brush and then I used the sponge brush on the back and just did solid color. This one was with a uh, really wide brush that sucked up a lot of tie at once and so it turned out really nice. And then on the back I tried a blunt brush with a little bit of sippling because I figured why not. So you guys should definitely experiment, uh, see what happens, try your own batiking and definitely let us know. Um, take a picture and share it with us on Instagram. We'd love to see what you create.